Please welcome to the stage actress Claire Foy of Women Talking. And welcome back to the stage, Sharon Waxman. Oh, you sit there, yeah. Welcome, welcome, Claire. Thanks welcome to the Power Women Summit. I think you've just flown in, right? So, um, at some from point London. The biggest day, I think it's that. something. You know, <laughs> it's all a blur. It's the award season, so it's all a blur. Um, well, we really wanted to have you at the summit to talk about this film and this performance. It's so much um, of a piece with. The, the mission that we have of this event, which is to talk about women's empowerment, and the film is all about, is all about that. Mm -hmm. the, one of the things that's so striking about your involvement in this film is that I think we know you as an actress and associate you with more reserved roles. So obviously, Queen Elizabeth in The Crown, um, and this very British, you know, reserve which we love. We love those performances. Um, but this is, it is really a departure. Your character is angry and actively angry and, exp and needs to express that anger. So I first wanted to ask you um, why you were drawn to the role to begin with. Um, yeah, I think Salome's a lot of things. I think she's really frustrated. Um, I think she feels betrayed. She's... Um, murderous, basically, is quite a good way of describing her. Um, both herself, her mother, her sister, all the women that she knows, and her four-year-old daughter have been um, sexually abused while they were ma made unconscious. So I feel like her anger and her rage is pretty righteous um, and also proportionate to the trauma that she's experienced, and I feel like it's also her capacity at that point to stay alive um, if she didn't have the anger, I don't really know how she'd keep going, to be honest. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and that was, uh, like, so the, it's based on a book by a Canadian author called Miriam Taves. And uh, I originally, when I was sent an email about the job, I got the, uh, like a, uh, a link to, uh, I think it was like The Guardian or The New York Times or something, um, article about the real-life attacks that happened in Bolivia in a Mennonite community. Um, and that was my first sort of introduction to the story. And my first thought was, well, that, you know, how are they going to make that into a film? Um, and then I read the script, and the script was extraordinary, but it was still incredibly unique, and it was like nothing I'd ever read. I'd never read a script that was just women's voices talking um, uh, about things that women talk about. I <laughs> just hadn't read one, because um, they're pretty rare. But also, I mean, just the idea that you want to spend your time in a world in which it's it's a group of women who've been, frankly, raped, assaulted. Mm. In this, in the real life story, which you can look it up, it's true, happened multiple times <laughs> over many years. It just seems like if I were to get a script like that, and I'm not an actor, but you know, it would be at least I need to take a beat and think: Do I want to spend my emotional? <laughs> do I want to take this journey? Yeah, but I sort of think there's more of an honesty about that. I, I feel like the world we live in is the world these women live in, unfortunately. I don't... The people I know, the women I know, are, are survivors. So I feel like it's more honest to the experience of what it is to be a woman in a modern... in the society that we live in than... You said the women you know else. are survivors? Yeah. I think... Every, I mean... Every, yeah. Aren't, yeah. I mean, am I speaking to a, into a void? Like, I feel like everybody in this room... The women that they know are survivors. Yeah. So, I, so I don't. I never felt like it was um, a. It, yes, obviously it was a. It was a kind of. This is going to take a lot, um, but it's also going to give me a lot. You know, I can't stress enough the uniqueness of being reading a script like this and then being given the gift of being trusted with it and working with these extraordinary actors and the crew and Sarah, who's a genius, and, you know, it's, just, it's, it's once in a lifetime, unfortunately, I think. It kind of is. You had, it, you had Frances McDormand, Rooney Mara, Judith Ivey. I mean, some really incredible actors. What was that like in the sort of interaction on the set? Um, 
I, I, I presume most of you didn't know each other before and got together and had to have these incredibly intense scenes. Yeah, so, I, so I'd met um, Jesse and Ben. Um, oh, right, Jesse Buckley, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. before. Um, and Ben Wisher. Like not, I haven't worked with them, just in a social setting, and also just loving them from afar. I just think they're extraordinary. Um, so, but that's what actors do. That's sort of what we're in it for. We go very deep, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that Sarah cast this film with a certain type of actor in mind, and it was like a completely egalitarian. There was very few egos. It was which is rare for actors. Um, but it was like everybody was there for the right reasons. We all had a very similar but, you know, obviously differing approach to working. But it was, you know, we just all wanted to be there for each other and for Sarah and for the story. It was, it was yeah, it, it may seem like it was really hard, but that's sort of what you're in it for. And, and the hardship was nothing in comparison to what that energy was like and the dynamic and like, the hope that I had working on it. So for those who haven't seen the film, we should just explain that it's these women, most of the film takes place basically in a, in a hayloft in this Mennonite or Mennonite-like community where they are completely cut off from the world and the women and the children and the families are all raised in this very kind of couple centuries old tradition like without televisions or cell phones or anything like that. Yeah, without any electricity at all. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It's basically living in and, medieval. And also the idea, like, it's supposed to be a religious community, and this is going on a in a religious community. The women are finding themselves waking up with blood in the bed or with bruises on their limbs and finally figured out that they're all being assaulted after being drugged at night. It seems almost kind of, just really does kind of boggle the mind that this could even happen. You know, but in any event, the, it's this, conver this very intense conversation where the women are deciding what are they going to do about this now that they've learned that they understand that this is what's been happening to them. And yeah, they have to decide basically, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, they have to forgive the men. That's the, that's the tenet of the Mennonite faith is forgiveness and pacifism. Um, and so the idea these women live with faith, their, their, their faith is very important to them. It's a sort of life and death situation. That they have, they believe, they've been told by the elders of the community, who are all men, that they must forgive the men. And so they have to decide whether they're gonna stay and fight, whether they're going to stay and do nothing, or whether they're gonna leave. And these women are basically the representatives of several families in the colony who have been put forward to decide that for the fate of all the women in the colony. So you see a very few women. It's just basically like the Senate. Um, and it mm. works very well, um, unlike a lot of democratic um, elected groups of people. These women are able to have different opinions, they're able to fight, they're able to disagree, they're able to take space, they're able to give space, and ultimately the conversation is basically coming to a c communal, collective decision, whilst everybody compromises and everybody changes, and that's okay. Um, and they do it because they're great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Sarah Polly, the director um, and writer, yeah, yeah um, she has, it, there's, it seems very allegorical about like what, what is the role of a woman in, in today's society. Obviously, it's an extreme, you know, depiction of women in, in a crisis moment needing to decide what they're going to do. But you really could draw a pretty distinct line to where women are today and what are, how are women going to respond to the fact that rights are being taken away. We just had a conversation about abortion and lack of choice and heard from a an abortion provider in Arizona who's struggling every day to keep the doors open and having to make really impossible decisions. Um, are, or are we going to just be passive or are we going to, you know, move to the UK where maybe it's better? Wow. You know? yeah. It's not great over there. Um, I don't know, I think, uh, I think that what this film offers is um, I don't think it's just about women. I think that's what I have found the film has an amazing ability to do. It's any marginalised group of people, any group of people who've been oppressed or told a truth about themselves that's not the truth for centuries, 
um, and who it's unsafe for them to imagine a world other than the world they've been told they're living in. Mm. These women do not know what the world without the men in is like. They do not know how to read. They don't know how to write. They don't know where they are in the world. They don't know how to have freedom of thought and permission to have freedom of thought. Um, and this is their first experience of being given the opportunity to design a life. And I think that's what the problem is that is happening in the world at the moment is that we believe that we don't have the right to imagine a world in which we are, can be equal participants, whether that's any marginalized community, women or otherwise. Um, and this film genuinely shows that there can be a template of how you hope for that and how you can make that yourself in whatever way that is, whether that's a big decision or a small decision that you make in your life, that you can say no or yes or nothing at all, really. Mm. It's a really good insight. I, I mean, I don't... Um, it, 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 as this microcosm, it's like the world is created and structured in a certain way and it's meant it's meant to not change. I think that's so much. And then at a certain point it becomes, and the women have accepted it for decades or centuries, I don't know how long these communities live, but then once a certain line is crossed, they're like, well, no, that's not, a, that's not acceptable. And then they have to start thinking about all kinds of things that are outside the scope of what was accepted thought. And I, I think that's also what's happening in our society is like, um, we are seeing change demanded and happen, and the forces that don't want change are saying, wait, wait a minute, it was great the way it was, you know? Yeah, I think it's a scary place to live, isn't it? Um, yes. And I can imagine it's very scary and makes people defensive if the world that they know and trust is being questioned. But I sort of think that the idea that anything is constant, the idea that anything is without doubt or um, fallibility is the biggest lie. I think we have to move through life knowing that none of this is solid um, and it will change and it will always change. Mm -hmm. And I think the people who get the most scared are terrified of that. And that's okay, they can be terrified. That doesn't have to stop me having my opinion. I've still got my opinion. Like, I'm sorry it upsets you, but you know. Yeah, exactly. You carry on. Like I'm still. That doesn't. You know. It's. Yeah. Uh, and I think that the, the the film is really amazing about just being able to offer a different perspective. It's bit. You know, these women face something which is so interesting. We've seen so many films which are about whether a rocket goes into space to blow up an asteroid, or there's a submarine and something really dangerous. You don't know what's happening, but something dangerous is happening, and it's really important. There's lots of men around a table pushing things around and having serious conversations, and like it's a really big deal. And then they have like a ma like massive shot of the earth, and then we zoom in to a football pitch. Like it's like, we've had all this sort of way of- Hollywood in a nutshell by yeah. Claire Foy. <laughs> and, um, what Sarah wants to do with this film is be like, these, this choice that these women are making is monumental. They are starting a civilization. And women do that in small ways every day. And people are doing that all the time. And I think that this film shows that whilst there is so much damage being done and there is so much fear and um, uh, can feel very unsafe, that there is always the other option. There is always the other option, even if you can't see it in the darkest times. Like, it is there somewhere. It's like being on an aeroplane going up over the clouds. It's sunny up there, um, mm -hmm. even if it's raining mm -hmm. below. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a feat of imagination yeah. in some ways. You have to imagine it and then yeah. create it. Yeah. So let's talk for a second about you, Clara the actress, because... Um, you were so absolutely magnificent as Queen Elizabeth in The Crown, and you won the Emmy for that. Um, so, and it's partly because I think you just embodied her, and um, it has to be one of the great challenges. And then you went back and you reprised the role in the later series. So I guess I wanted to ask how playing that role affected you personally and how it's impacted the choices you want to make professionally or personally 
since then to take you to the place you're at now? It's really interesting because I had a lot of love and affection and um, respect for that character that I played. Um, but it was a character. I was character acting. That's what I was doing, basically, which at my age and my stage of career didn't really exist anymore or yeah. <clears throat> a belief I had about filmmaking or TV making was that you couldn't character act unless you were a certain type of actor on screen because you, you just didn't get the opportunity, especially as like a 30-year-old woman. Um, <laughs> Good so, point. <laughs> um, so I think that the the actual making of it influenced me more than the character I was playing. Um, in the sense, I mean, in so many ways, it was, I'd never done anything with that much money behind it. I'd never done anything with that mm -hmm. wider scope and reach. Mm. Um, and it definitely changed where my career was at at that point. Um, but I, yeah, but I wouldn't, I, I, I had the lasting effects of playing that character, I wouldn't say were many, I don't think. Well, it's... <laughs> I've not got any more royal than... <laughs> well, um, but you were certainly the face of that of the series and you were the center of the series. So I, there's a ton of characters. There were so many great other performances. But I mean, at least for, you know, for me watching it, it definitely gave me a very different view of the monarchy in, in the United Kingdom and um, actually more respect for it as an American. We're sort of, you know, hardwired to not really um, give a lot of seriousness or to like, you know, that's not for us, you know, but. Really? I would find it's the opposite. I think. Are, you, are you serious? Yeah. Oh no, yeah, we like, I think the monarchy is like, yeah, we don't, why, why would you need a monarchy? That's ridiculous. I would say that here there's much more reverence and interest than there is in the UK. Here? Oh my God. Okay, yeah. can we just do a, a straw poll? Like, clap if you think the monarchy is kind of a joke. I don't know. No, 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 not if it's a joke. Like, we don't want one here. <laughs> no, no, I meant interest in it. Interest because, yeah, we like celebrity and it's celebrity, but I think we look at it more as a soap opera rather than, um, you know, oh, we have to curtsy, really? That kind of thing. Like, we, we really had a revolution for that. Not been my, you're the first person that's ever said that to me. I've never had that experience. <laughs> Maybe they're being super polite. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe that's your opinion. I don't know. <laughs> well, that, that is definitely is my opinion, for sure. But anyway, you helped change my opinion. I, had a, I, came, I came away from watching the series with a lot more regard for what it meant and why, why it's important. And it had everything to do with what you represented in that film because certainly the shenanigans of the next generation down have not been super convincing, so. That's really interesting because I think that the, op the I think people could argue the opposite of the show. Um, I think what was really interesting for me as an actor was um, investigating people that nobody was that interested in understanding to be human beings because of their privilege, because yeah. of their position in society and their life. Um, and I would only hope that the outcome of the show was to remind everybody, that everybody in the world, especially you know people in the public eye or not in the public eye, that everyone's a human being and maybe to have tolerance and understanding and lack of judgment. Um, but it definitely wasn't to be. What was really interesting before, when we were publicizing it before anyone had seen it, we got lots of questions about how do you feel about being in something that's really royalist? Um, mm. And we were like, it's not, like, it's, it's not. Like, they think that you miss the point of the show if you make it about the royal family, in a weird way. Yeah, but I mean, with all the sets and all the grandeur of the show, that is certainly part of its appeal. And so that is, but I, I never at all watched it thinking, oh, this is, a, this is an advertisement for royalism. I didn't think that at all. I, I think. Oh, I th sorry, that I got confused then, because that's what I thought you were saying. No, not at all. But I think I think that you punctured my kind of um, American bias. I would say against a certain um, sacredness of the monarchy, because I understood what it meant and who the, the people were. To be in it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry if I clarified. No, no. I, I'm, I'm. I'm so tired. I. I <laughs> 
I, I want to just ask, what, what other things do you think you want to do in your career? I mean, this is this she, this um, woman talking is very much departure, departure from most roles, really. I mean, it's so intense and so personal and intimate. Um, and it's great to see you go in a very different direction. And you have some very intense scenes. There's not like makeup and hair. It's like it's, it's very, very stripped down intentionally. So um, what, what are other things that you'd want to explore, do you think? Just everything I can get my hands on, basically. Like I don't... Um I don't have a grand plan. I don't have, um, I can't think one step ahead, unfortunately. I'm not very good at that. Um, and Well, um, I mean, there's no asteroids in your future, perhaps. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, I don't, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know it until people write it. I'm so dependent on writers and I love writers and I feel like, oh, yeah, brilliant writers. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's an invitation for someone in this room to write a fantastic no, no, role no, for Claire. No, I just feel like that you have. To, I just feel like they need as much support as they can possibly get. Like I just feel like you should be be able to take risks, be able to do bad things. Like I just feel like the like the the rate of tu like turnover in this industry is sort of mind boggling, and I just think people should be allowed to you know experiment and do different things. Do you mean the, the rate of turnover of what? Ev everyone. Like every, I just feel like, you know, directors, I feel like, have a really hard time. I don't know how they do it. Like, you do one film that doesn't go particularly well, and it's like, farewell. Um, <laughs> forever. Um, I don't know. I just think that it's... I just think it's really... I think it, you're in it for, hopefully, life is long, and hopefully you get to do what you love, and if not, then you take it a different avenue and try something different, but... Um, yeah, I just yeah, I just like acting a lot, um, and <laughs> I would love to keep but doing it. But it shows. <laughs> yeah, I just love doing different things and working with different people and going to different places, and yeah, very lucky. Ha have you felt um, in your career that being a woman in as an actress in this industry, there's been in this period of time, it's been very turbulent. There's been a lot of um, ripping away, you know, the, the veneer of what really goes on and what it is really like for women. And we have many uh, survivors of actual assault at, at this event who we always honor and embrace at this, um, this is their home. <laughs> uh, how, how do you feel as a prominent and respected woman in this industry going forward? Do you feel like it's difficult? Do you feel like it's gotten better? Do you feel it's the same? It depends which day you get me on, basically, because some days I'm really optimistic and some days I'm really depressed. Um, I think that it would be naive to think that some sort of fixing has happened, um, because I just think it's a generational thing. I think that generationally, the systems and the, everything is so ingrained that it will just take an awfully long time. And I think, obviously, the pendulum swings one way, and then it will hopefully come back, um, and that's the... You don't want it to go back the other direction. But I do feel that, you know, the, um, doing this film was a first time for all of us. And there were three different generations of actors. There was uh, Kate and Liv, who were 16 and 17. This is their first ever job. Mm -hmm. There was me, Ben, Jesse, Rooney, uh, and Michelle. And then there was Judith and Sheila and Frances, who were the older actresses. And none of us had done a film like this before, which was discussing things in this way with a female voice with other actresses, with directed and written by a woman. And so that, that says it all, really, doesn't it? I mean, it's really hopeful, and it's also really depressing that this is the first time for three gener like those older generations as well. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I've got a lot of hope, but I also think it's... We've got to... You know, we steady the buffs. Like, we've got to... Um, that's a sort of weird English phrase. Um, we've got to, you know, keep... Up, like, not get overexcited, because it's a long, old... Slog, mm. and we're standing very much on the shoulders of people who've been doing this for, you know, decades. So I don't think it's an easy fix, unfortunately. But that's also positive. Not to, you know, make it a downer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it as a positive. Thank you so much, Claire Foy, for jo joining us here. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for being here. Great day. Yes.